To make a bridge wire detonator, first start with very thin copper wire. I use this stuff from alligator clips, and I use about one to one and a half centimeters at a time. That is how thin the wire is. Next, crimp some larger wires around the small wire. As you can see, I made a sort of loop with the larger wire and then smooshed the small wire inside it. I'll do it on the green side now as well. Now the small wire cannot escape from the larger wires. And then usually I take it and turn it into a kind of arch like this. And that is the bridge wire detonator. Then I like to tape it so that the larger wires can't short and to keep them a constant distance apart as well as to make this a smaller package for insertion into devices. So now we have the bridge wire and it's completely connected. It's much faster to do this than soldering and at least it works better for lots and lots of these bridge wires. And then there's the lead wires that go off quite a ways, maybe a meter. And now this can be inserted into a ball of nitrocellulose or other explosives or even just exploded for fun, which I'll show next. Using the bridge wire detonator is simple as well. Here I have a camera capacitor charging circuit and five disposable camera flash capacitors connected in parallel. See all the white strips have to be on one side and all the non-white strips have to be on the other side since these are electrolytic capacitors. The capacitor bank goes into this switch which simply is a bolt and another bolt inside a pen case held apart by a spring. When they touch, they make a continuous circuit. It's kind of the big red button for explosives. That then goes over here to the red wire, which goes into the bridge wire. Through the bridge wire is the green wire, which connects back to the capacitor bank. When the capacitor bank is charged, pressing the red button initiates the bridge wire. Kaboom. As you can see, the wire is completely gone, vaporized into thin air. These bridge wires are not as dangerous as primary explosives, but since they still use high voltages, care must be taken. While one capacitor might just give a slight tingling shock, five could potentially kill you. Here the detonator is wired to the capacitor bank through a small wire with a bit of nitrocellulose. The capacitor bank is charged and I have a small copper wire between the prongs of a normal electrical cord which then goes all the way back to the capacitor bank. This will test to make sure the wire still explodes if it has longer leads connected to it because in an explosion you want to be kind of far away. It's charged up to 313 volts and